Hi, my name is Sam Hedrick, and I'm a solutions engineer at Checkmarks. Today, I'm here to talk to you about the CX1 VS Code plugin installation and configuration. Today, I'm going to use the VS Code plugin, but all of our IDE plugins have very similar installation steps from their extensions or marketplace areas. To install the plugin, first go to the extension page, either from the gear icon in the lower left-hand corner or the block icon in the left toolbar. Once you've entered the extension page, search for checkmark. You'll see a couple of results come up. Checkmarks one is what you want to choose. Checkmarks fast is our legacy product. So I choose checkmarks one by clicking install in the lower right hand corner of the display. You can see here, a page came up, currently has the installing indicator that lets me know that it's working. Once the install is complete, you'll notice that a checkmarks icon has been added to your toolbar to the left. First, before using the plugin, we need to configure it. So click on the gear icon in your lower left-hand corner and go to settings. Here we can either search settings for checkmarks or we can expand the tree on the left to, to extension check marks one. Now you see here we need an API key for authentication. This will allow the workspace to authenticate to the check marks one platform. To create an API key, go into the main UI platform, click on the gear icon in the lower left hand corner and choose identity and access management. Once you're there, click on the key icon that brings you to the API key area. From there, click the Create Key button. I can enter a name for the API key, an expiration key, and then optionally any notification emails I'd like for people to receive that this key has been created. Once the key has been created, be sure to note it in the secure location, and you can also copy it directly to put in the plugin. So I chose the copy icon in the upper right-hand corner of the key display screen, and I'm now going to go back to Visual Studio. Once I'm back in Visual Studio, I can right-click and choose Paste to put my API key into the checkmark settings. Once I've done that, I can come back and click on the check marks icon in the toolbar to the left. The first thing I want to do is select my project. So that brings up a list at the top of the page that allows me to search and choose the project that makes sense for me. So in this case, that's SHJVLADO. Stands for my name, Java Vulnerable Lab, and this is coming from Azure DevOps, although it doesn't matter to the IDE at this point. I can then choose a branch by clicking on the pencil icon next to the branch. And you can see here, there's only one branch to choose from, master. Now you may have noticed that as I go through these uh, processes, there is a status icon in the bottom right of the window that shows you that the Checkmarks One plugin is working. Now the Checkmarks One plugin has loaded the master branch, and since there's only one latest scan for that branch, it automatically loaded it. Now, if I'd like to, I can select a different scan by clicking the pencil icon in the scanner viewer. You can see here I'm presented with all my scans, and I'll choose the latest. Again, we see the loading results window in the lower right-hand corner. Now the scan is loaded, and I see the three categories of the engine that I've chosen for this particular scan when I last run it. I can expand any of them and go to the results. For example, here are the results for the file change card details.jsp. 
And if I click on an attack vector statement within here, I'm jumped to that location in the source code. Now I know I'm up and running with the Checkmarks 1 plugin for VS Code, and I'm ready to move forward with its utilization. And that's how you install and configure the CX1 VS Code plugin. If you like this, we have a lot more videos on how to work with Checkmarks on our YouTube channel. Check out the link in the description for more.